Notes 6.1, new chapter, new year, new decade. We're going to be doing operations on functions. So we already know what functions are, right? There's an input that you can plug in, you get an answer, that's your output. We already know that functions have different names. This one's called f of x, this one's called g of x. And we know function notation. Like on number one right here, it says find g of 3. It doesn't mean g times 3, it means g of 3. That's how you read it. And what that tells you, it's notation for a long sentence. The sentence is plug in the number 3 into your g of x function and then simplify it to get your answer. So instead of writing all those instructions out, they just write g of 3. So again, what does that mean? You go to your g of x function, do the input 3 right in there into the x, work out the math, and get your output, get your answer. Okay. Um, and then you go to your f of x function, which is right here, and plug in the negative 3, do the math, get your answer, you'll have your output. So I'm going to pause it right here, and you guys tell me the answers. Go for it. Ladies and gentlemen, the answer number 1 is negative 10, and the answer number 2 is 11. Let's find out how we get those answers, yeah? Again, this notation is telling you to plug in 3 into your g of x function. So you're going to go to your g of x function, which is right here. This is the machine that we call g of x, right here. Negative 4 times x plus 2. Now, instead of the x, we're going to put parentheses because we're going to plug in the 3. So again, you're going to your g function, and you're going to plug in 3. So let's first start by rewriting our g function. Our g function is negative 4x plus 2. So here it goes, negative 4x plus 2. Now notice that instead of x, I put parentheses. Instead of this x, I put the parentheses. Why is that? Because they're telling us to plug in the number 3 right in there. So I'm going to take this number 3 and plug it right in there. So what I really have is multiplication and then addition. Do multiplication first, negative 4 times 3, that's negative 12, and negative 12 plus 2 is negative 10. Let me rewrite that for you. Negative 12 plus 2 is negative 10. There's your answer for g of 3. Let's find the answer to f of negative 3. We're going to plug in negative 3 into the f of x function. So here's the machine that we call f of x. Let's rewrite this, but instead of the x, we're going to put parentheses. So I'm going to rewrite it as 2x squared minus 7. Notice that I put parentheses instead of that x. And it's telling us to plug in negative 3 into the f of x function. So plug in that negative 3 right in here. And then you do the math. Of course, we have multiplication right here between the 2 and the parentheses. We have exponents and we have subtraction. According to the correct order of operations, we need to do exponents first. So negative 3 in parentheses squared, that's negative 3 times negative 3, which is positive 9. So you have 2 times 9 minus 7. 2 times 9 is 18. 18 minus 7 is 11. So those are our two answers, negative 10 and positive 11. This is all a review from chapter, or not from chapter 1, but from semester 1, right? Um, if you don't know it, please understand it now because you need to know it. On this section, in this new chapter, we're going to be doing operations on functions. Right here, we just plugged in 3 and got out an answer. We plugged in negative 3 and got out an answer. We're now going to be doing operations with these functions. What does this mean? Let me move some of this stuff out of the way here. Like, imagine if my problem said to find f of x plus g of x. I'm going to do an operation with the functions. I'm going to add both the f of x function together with the g of x function. So what is f of x? It's 2x squared minus 7. And what's the g of x function? The g of x function is negative 4x plus 2. So I'm going to add the negative 4x plus 2. So this is what we call doing operations with functions. I'm going to be adding the f of x function with the g of x function. That's this plus this. So there's really no need for parentheses because even if I did put parentheses around the g of x, the plus sign that you distribute wouldn't change anything. So if you're adding two functions, you just put the plus sign between them and then combine like terms. So the answer to this guy, to the f of x plus g of x, you'd have the 2x squared You'd combine the negative 7 with the plus 2. That would give you a negative 5 as your constant at the very end. And you'd have the middle term being the minus 4x. So this would be your answer to f of x plus g of x. And that right there is an operation on functions. 
So not only are we going to be adding f of x plus g of x, we might be subtracting f of x with g of x. We might be multiplying f of x and g of x. We might be dividing f of x and g of x. So if you look at your books, which you don't have in front of you, this is uh, page 385. And there's specific notation for adding, subtracting, and multiplying, and dividing. So this notation right here is not saying f plus g and then times x. This is really saying take your f of x function, add it with your g of x function. Okay? So this notation right here really means f of x plus g of x. Now, they're going to tell you what f of x is and what g of x is. f of x in this case is 2x. g of x in this case is negative x plus 5, the binomial negative x plus 5. So if they're asking you to add the f of x with the g of x, all you do is plug in your f of x here, your g of x there, and add them together. So your f of x is 2x. Your g of x is the binomial x minus 5. Again, the plus sign, you don't really need the parentheses because if you distribute the plus sign, nothing changes. So you really have 2x take away x, which will be 1x, and then with the 5 left over. So your answer is x plus 5, and that's what they have right there as an answer. So again, you're not just going to be adding f of x plus g of x. You're going to be subtracting, multiplying, and even dividing. And there's notations for each of those. So when you see f plus g of x, that's really telling you to add f of x with g of x. f minus g of x, that really says f of x minus g of x. And right here on the minus, it really is important to use parentheses. So when you have your f of x function, you put it here. Your g of x function, you put it here. But put it in parentheses because that minus sign is going to be needed to, to be distributed, which changes the signs. So as you can see over here, they have the f of x minus the g of x. f of x is 2x. The g of x, they put in parentheses because this minus sign needs to be distributed, which will change it to a positive x and change that positive 5 to a negative 5. So what is 2x? plus x. Negative one. OK, remember, the minus changes that to a plus, right? So what's 2x plus x? 3x, right? And when you distribute the minus sign to the plus 5, it just becomes a minus 5. So you're really going to have 2x plus x, which is 3x, and then minus 5. So your answer is 3x minus 5. So the notation here, f dot g of x, that's really multiplying your f of x function with your g of x function. Right there, you really do need to put both of the functions in parentheses so you could distribute. So you might have a binomial times a binomial. Uh, in this case, you just have a monomial times a binomial. So there's really no need for the parentheses in the first one, but you will be distributing to both. So your answer here would be negative 2x squared plus 10x. And that's what the answer is right here in the book. So the book is a great resource. As a matter of fact, uh, whenever I teach a section, it's not like I have every single detail of Algebra 2 memorized. I go through the book itself. I look at the examples and the notes. I read it. I, I learn it. I relearn it. And then I'm able to teach it. So you guys could always look at the book uh, for examples and for the notes. Uh, division, this doesn't mean to divide f by g and then multiply it by x. It means f of x divided by g of x. Okay. So you're just going to write your f of x function, whatever it is, over the g of x function, whatever it is, and then try to simplify it. So when <coughs> you write the f of x function, which is 2x, over the g of x function, which is the binomial x x, negative x plus 5, there's nothing to cancel. So there's nothing to do. That is your answer. However, whenever you have a variable in the denominator, you want to state whatever value it cannot be. All right. So what number would mess this whole fraction up? If I had a what right here? If I had a 5 right here, it would be a negative 5 plus 5, which would give me 0. And anytime anything's divided by 0, it's undefined. So that would mess it up. So this is your answer. But you also have to state that the x value cannot be 5, because uh, x value of 5 would give you a negative 5, which would make this whole thing 0, which would make an undefined fraction. Are you with me? OK, so a big part of the homework of the class, a big part of the first part of the quiz 
whenever we have a quiz, is to be able to do these different operations with different functions. And in the book itself, like I said, it has notes, it has, it's full of examples. Right here you have another example. Your f of x function is x squared minus 4. Your g of x function is 2x plus 1. This notation is telling you to add your f of x with your g of x. So you put your f of x right here, your g of x right there, put a plus sign. You don't really need the parentheses because the plus sign doesn't change anything. So you just combine like terms and you'll get that quadratic trinomial answer. Or the notation might be this, which would be f of x minus g of x. So f of x minus g of x. Now right there, you most definitely need those parentheses around the second one because the minus sign changes. Then you could combine like terms and get your correct answer. And of course, it's not just adding or subtracting. Uh, you might have multiplication or division, right? So all these notes are in your book. And not only are we going to be adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing different functions, we're going to get to really some fun stuff where I give you two functions like this, f of x and g of x, and then we have what we call fog notation. Fog notation. Why do they call it fog? Because it looks like the word fog. See, there's, it's not really a dot. It's an open dot. Now, what this really means is that you want to plug in your g of x function into your f of x function. So everybody, if you're falling asleep, wake up now. This is the, the meat and potatoes of today's lesson right here. f circle g, that really means to take your g function and plug it into the f function. See, right here you have g of x inside f of x. Now, if this g of x were really just like a number 7, that'd be really easy, right? f of 7, what do you do if there was an f of 7? What do you do? You just plug in 7, right? into your f of x function. But you don't have a 7 right here. You have a g of x. So what am I going to be plugging into my f of x function? I'm going to be plugging whatever my g of x is. As you can see, g of x is really 4a. So the 4a is really going to go in place of my g of x function. So I'm really going to have f of 4a, which means I'm going to be plugging in 4a into my f of x function. So I'm going to take that 4a and plug it into my f of x function into that a position. So they take that 4a, plug it in right here, and they have 2 times parenthesis 4a minus 5. 2 times parenthesis 4a minus 5. Do the math, you get 8a minus 5 as your final answer for this fog notation. Okay. So, I mean, let me actually go back to the class opener. So we have our two functions from the original class opener. Now, if I told you to uh, find g of f of x, what does that really mean? It means to take your f of x function and plug it inside your g of x function. So you would take your f of x function, this blue guy, and plug it inside your g of x function. So let me try to clear this up for you. Whenever you think of a complicated math problem, think of an easier math problem so it'll make sense. If I had g of 5, what would I do? g of 5, what would I do? Plug in a 5 right there, right? And you plug it in with parentheses. So if I had a 5, I would rewrite it as negative 4 times 5 plus 2 if it said g of 5. But it doesn't say g of 5. It says g of f of x. f of x is this binomial. Let me actually circle this binomial. And we're plugging that in right there. 2x squared minus 7. So to do the math here, you're going to distribute negative 4 times 2x squared. That's negative 8x squared. Negative 4 times negative 7. That's plus 28. And then the plus 2 comes down. So, so g of f of x really is the answer negative 8x squared plus 30. Now, I didn't use the fog notation. And to be honest with you, I probably won't use it. But you need to know fog notation um, just in case it comes out on the CASP, on that test that you take when you're junior, juniors. So just for the record, <clears throat> this uh, fog notation would be G open circle F of X. This is the same thing as that right there, just for the record. And this is your answer, the negative 8X squared plus 30. Could it get more fun than that? Yes, it does. What do I mean by that? I might tell you to find something like f of g of 2. 
And right there, you would work from the inside to the outside. You would take the two and plug it into your G function, get an actual answer, and then take that answer and plug it into your F function. And of course, we'll do some examples of those right now. Let's move on to our actual homework. So on the fog notation, the function after the dot is what's going to be plugged into the first function. Okay. So G open circle F, that's really saying G of F of X. Okay. It's you're plugging in your F of X function into your G of X function. Let's jump to our worksheet. Ladies and gentlemen, check this out. Uh, we're only doing questions one and three. And on this first part, it's actually four questions in one. We have to understand the notation. They want us to take the f of x function, add it with the g of x function, get an answer. And then they want us to take the f of x function, subtract it with the g of x function. And then they want us to go f of x times g of x. And then they want us to do f of x divided by g of x. So we're only doing one and three because there's four on each of these. Um, let's do probably the more challenging one, which is three. So you might have to write this over somewhere, or you're going to have to write really, really, really small. So let's find out the first thing, f plus g of x. Now, what does that really mean? That really means f of x plus g of x. So our f of x really is x squared plus 7x plus 12. So let's write that down, x squared plus 7x plus 12. You could put it in parentheses if you want. There is a plus sign in between the f of x and the g of x. The g of x function is, I'm going to write it in blue, x squared minus 9. So I'm going to put an x squared minus 9 right there. Now, are the parentheses necessary on this one? No. Why? Because if you distribute the plus sign, it's not going to change. If you distribute the plus sign, it's not going to change. So you could just ignore the parentheses. You could erase the parentheses if you want to when you are adding two functions together. Now, if you're subtracting, which we have to do on the next problem, it's, you definitely need the parentheses. Right here, you don't need the parentheses. But if this were a minus sign, you absolutely need the parentheses to remind you to distribute that minus sign to both terms. Anyway, right now, let's just combine like terms. What is x squared plus x squared? 2x squared, right? What is 7x plus, there's no other x's, so that just comes down. And last but not least, positive 12 combined with negative 9. It's going to be a positive 3. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the answer to f plus g of x. That's really the quadratic trinomial 2x squared plus 7x plus 3. That's adding the f of x with the g of x. Now let's subtract f of x with g of x. So we're going to have f of x minus g of x. I probably should have written it with the original notation, but we're going to take f of x minus g of x. So f of x is x squared plus 7x plus 12. And we are going to be subtracting the g of x function from it. Let's put the g of x in parentheses. And the g of x is x squared minus 9. So right here, it's absolutely necessary to have parentheses, especially around this function right here. Because if you didn't have these parentheses, you're going to think that that's a minus x squared, and you would leave this as a negative 9, and that would be incorrect. You need to change both signs, making this a negative x squared and this a positive 9. OK, so now we could combine like terms. We could combine the positive x squared over here with this negative x squared, and what would happen? Cancel out, disappear, they evaporate. And then we have the 7x that we could combine with what? There's nothing else, so there's my answer, 7x. And then there's also this 12 that we could combine with this 9, and that'll be positive 21. So there's my answer to f minus g of x. That's the correct notation I should have used. Are you with me? All right, so what else do we need? We've added them. We've subtracted them. Let's multiply them now, right? Man, multiplying is going to be a long one. Um, are you guys able to do that, or do you want to see it? See it? OK, well, here's uh, f of x times g of x. So you would write your f of x function, which is this guy, 
times your g of x function, which is this guy. And honestly, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> I want you guys to do it. You're gonna have to distribute, right? Just remember, distribute one at a time. I would go with the binomial going into the trinomial. So I would start out by saying x squared times x squared, x to the fourth, right? And then x squared times seven x, that'll be seven x to the third. x squared times 12, that's gonna be 12 x squared. And then you distribute the minus nine. Minus nine times x squared, that's minus nine x squared. I guess I am doing this work. Minus nine times seven x, that's minus 63 with an x. And minus nine times 12, that's minus 70, 82, right? 84, what am I saying? Math teacher can't multiply. Um, and then you combine all the like terms possible, which is the x squares with the x squares, and that's it, right? I think that's it. So your final answer would be, I'm not gonna write it, there's not enough space, x to the fourth plus seven x to the third plus three x squared minus 63 x minus 84. That's gonna be your answer for multiplying them. Now dividing them, it gets really interesting. That's why I wanted to do number three instead of number one. So the notation says f divided by g of x. So you're gonna take your f of x function and divide it by your g of x function. So what is your f of x function? It is x squared plus seven x plus 12 divided by the g of x function, which is x squared minus nine. Then you simplify, you cancel out anything that you could actually cancel. Could you cancel this x squared with that x squared? Actually, you cannot. Let's take it back to something very simple. What if I had three plus two, what's three plus two? Five, if I divide it by two, what's my answer? Is the answer three? I cannot cancel here, right? Why not? Because there's addition, right? So when you have addition or subtraction, you cannot cancel because five divided by two is not three. But what if it were not? addition. What if it were multiplication? I'd have 6 divided by 2, and right here you can cancel. Right there the answer is 3. Are you with me? So if you have multiplication, you're able to cancel. If you have addition or subtraction, you're not able to cancel. Does that make sense? I hope so. Why am I saying that? Well, if we look over here, we have addition, 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 subtraction. You cannot cancel. But if you factor it, if we take a look at this red quadratic trinomial and think what times what is 12, that if I add together 7, what times what is 12, that if I add together 7? Help me out here, guys. 3 and 4. So if you have an x plus 3 times an x plus 4, that'll really give you this quadratic trinomial if you distribute and combine like terms. Now, could you factor the bottom one? What times what is negative 9? that if you combine together is the middle value, which is zero, because there is no middle value. There you go. x plus 3 and x minus 3. So what we did was use our previous factoring skills to rewrite them to get multiplication to then be able to cancel out the entire binomial x plus 3 with the entire binomial x plus 3. Are you with me? So your final answer is x plus 4 over x minus 3. Now remember, when you have a fraction and you get an answer, you want to state whatever the denominator cannot be. You don't want to mess up that fraction. So this is your answer right here, x plus 4 over x minus 3, but x cannot be positive 3 or negative 3. Now why positive 3 or negative 3? If you go back to the original, you can't have a 3 squared because 3 squared will give you 9, which will give you 0 in the denominator. Even a negative 3 squared will also give you 9, which will give you 0 in the denominator. So it can't be positive 3 or negative 3. Or if you looked at it even in the factored form, you can't have a negative 3 in here because that would make it 0, and 0 times anything makes the whole thing 0. And it can't be a positive 3 because 3 minus 3 is also 0. When you multiply it, it would make the whole thing 0. So again, whenever you get a fraction as an answer with the variable and the denominator, please state whatever x cannot be. It can't be 3 or negative 3. Anyway, there will be a couple of questions like that on the first quiz that we have. And then we get to the fun stuff, fog notation. Again, 
right here, the notation, this open circle, means that you're going to take the h of x function and plug it inside the g of x function. So there is an actual typo. I'm sorry. Right here it says, see, I have different letters right there. h of x needs to be plugged into the g of x. I don't know where this f of x ca came from. So let's all put an h of x in there. Let me do this. I'm going to change. I'm going to put a white out right here on the f. So once again, I need you guys to understand this, that this notation really means that you're going to be plugging your h of x function inside your g of x function. h of x is going to be inside the g of x function. So, and they also want you to do the other way around, the g of x function inside the h of x function. And this one's cool over here. g of x really is inside the h of x. So we need to do both ways. One inside the other, and then the other one inside the other one. So which number would you guys like to see done right here on this video? Pick one. We're doing the odd ones. You guys want to do 13? OK. So I'm not going to use fog notation. I'm just going to write it. I'm going to put my g of x function inside my h of x function. OK. And then later on, I'm going to do my h of x function inside my g of x function. I know it's kind of sloppy. I apologize. But anyways, let's plug in the g of x into the h of x. So this binomial is going to go into the h of x function. So let's start by rewriting our h of x function, 3x squared plus 1. You see, if this said h of 5, all I'd do is plug in 5 and then do the math. But it's not a 5, it's g of x. And g of x is actually the binomial x minus 2. So I'm actually going to plug in the x minus 2 right in here. x minus 2. Now this becomes a pretty uh, multi-step problem. You have a binomial squared. How do you do that? You actually need to write the binomial two times and distribute and combine like terms. x times x, x squared. x times negative 2, negative 2x. Negative 2 times x is another negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Combine the middle negative 2x with that negative 2x. You will get x squared minus 4x plus 4. Now keep in mind that all we've done is the exponent 2 so far. We still have the multiplication of 3 on the outside plus the 1 on the outside on the back side. So now we need to distribute that 3 into each and every term. You'll get 3x squared minus 12x plus 12. And then that plus 1 comes down at the end. So your final answer to h of g of x will be 3x squared minus 12x plus 13. And if you check your answer in the back, that should be one of the answers. Now we need to do the other one. Plug in your h of x into your g of x. Plug in your h of x into your g of x. So this h of x, this quadratic binomial, is going to go right in here. That's pretty easy to do. Um, the g of x function is x minus 2. And we said we're plugging in this quadratic binomial right in there into the x position. So you have a 3x squared plus 1 that you're plugging into the x minus 2. Now there is nothing to distribute. So you could just ignore the parentheses and just combine like terms the 1 with the minus 2. That's going to give you a minus 1. So what's the final answer here? 3x squared minus 1. That's for the g of h of x, plugging in your h of x into your g of x function. Fun stuff, right? Yes, it is. Could it get more fun? Absolutely. Check out this last section. On this last section, I give you three functions, f of x, g of x, and h of x. Sometimes you won't be using the first two or the second. I mean, who knows? You might use all three of them. Um, go ahead and pick one. 17. 17. Just like any other parentheses, you zoom in and you work from the inside out. So we're going to take this negative 9 and we're going to plug it in where? Into the h function. And then you're going to actually get an answer. And then once you get that answer, you're going to plug it in where? into the f function. So let's take negative 9 and plug it into h. As you can see up here, h really is x plus 4. 
So h of negative 9, that's really an x plus 4. And we're going to plug in negative 9 right in there. So that's really a negative 5. So do we agree that h of negative 9 is really negative 5? Yes, we agree. OK, thank you. So we're going to take that h of negative 9, which is really negative 5. And we're going to take that negative 5 and now plug it into f. You see, you really have f of negative 5. Why is that? Because h of negative 9 is really negative 5. So we're going to plug in negative 5 into our f of x function. f of x is really x squared. So I really have x squared. And we are plugging in that negative 5 right in there, which will give us a final answer of 25. So f of h of negative 9 really is positive 25. Check the answer on the back of the worksheet. You should see that answer, 25. It's a lot of work, not much time. I need you guys to do the rest of this. Um, check your answers as you go. If you don't finish, try to do it at home. And we'll still have a couple of minutes to do it in class tomorrow. So if you're stuck at home, um, you could watch the video for help. If you're still stuck, then we'll work on it tomorrow in class.